Hey guys, welcome to the next episode of the Junk Drawer Show Sports Edition, where we talk about our NFL podcast. Uh, I hope you enjoy the episode. We're doing a new format where we talk about subjects and kind of break them down into smaller chunks so that it's a little easier for you guys to digest. If you have anything in particular you'd like for us to talk about or weigh in on, uh, fantasy football questions, facts, figures, anything like that, let us know down in the comments, guys, and enjoy. So, Arizona, I want to talk about Arizona, a pick that you guys made quite a few uh thinking they could be the highest risers this year going a little off board, not drafting for need. I thought first round they were going to go offensive line. They did not do that. Mike Spillane thoughts. Well, to be completely honest in third, in the third round, they got a player with the first round grade at offensive line and Josh Jones. We looking over a lot of mock drafts, Josh Jones for a lot of people was going before Andrew Jackson, who the dolphins ended up drafted. So, and a lot of those mock drafts at 18, that was your pick, I believe at 18, they had Josh Jones being drafted by the dolphins. So they potentially got a first round tackle in round three. Um, But at the same time, what probably happened is the guy that they wanted was probably off the board at that point. Um, they might have their, their guy might have been Andrew Thomas, and we took him from him. Um, yeah, but, but I with think that being got... said, they go needed ahead. help on defense too. And Isaiah Simmons is going to go sure. down as debatably one of the best players from this class because of his versatility, and he's going to fit that Cliff Kingsbury style of whether we're on offense or defense, it's a run and gun, and speed kills. He's a difference. Um, like you can't tell me that that guy that guy has the same speed as Travis Etienne, the running back from Clemson. Yep. They ran an identical forty. Like Travis Etienne not being drafted this year, but they did a race and it was a photo finish. Like no Simmons, I think I said this last week was you you could have made arguments for him being in that one two three range. You yep. really could have for the versatility on D inside linebacker edge safety. He can just cover the field. What you get there is a guy that could run your defense for seven to ten years. That could happen. Now, you pair that with Kyler Murray and what's going on on the offensive side. Uh, a guy, I think, named DeAndre Hopkins came to town. That's a big fucking deal. What the offense is going to be able to do just by stretching the field. Kyler was already good. We knew it. We saw flashes. Kyler can stretch the field. The D doesn't even have to be on the field as long when you have an offense that's going to get first downs. DeAndre Hopkins is a beast, right? And they already had stuff. They already had a few pieces in place. Now you have what could be a, I don't know, like Von Miller-esque. That's the top. That's the top, top. But it's it's going to be under that. But something like that, a general, a field general on D He's going to want that. He's going to want to come in in that capacity and really take that role. I stick with what I said. There's a lot of movement for the Cardinals. They're going to be exciting. Well, I mean, and then kind of piggybacking off of that, you look at their receiver core right now. Their receiver core is DeAndre Hopkins, Christian Kirk, who's shown flashes of big potential, and you still have Larry Fitzgerald there. Granted, he's not, he's getting older and he's not running as well, but he you throw it at him. If it's hitting him in the hands, it's getting caught. Like, so that means you can just have him go ahead and run 10 yard hooks. And guess yeah. what? You got a fucking first down. Little, little like, first down, he outs, little outs, little ins. Just don't get him hit. He's 52. Yeah. I think don't let him get hit by probably other 52. Men. Yeah. Right. You know, he gets hit too many times. His sciatico. Is that allowed? You want to know? Yeah, man, go grab a beer. I'm going to top off my drink as well. Once we get on our, our next segment i swear you could just with no editing other than cutting it you have a miami little 20 minute show you've got a little you got little bits so mike it's called now is little bits little bits uh my and i'll we'll get craig's viewpoint on this because he's just going to get another beer yeah my dark horse my playoff dark horse the denver broncos yep did a lot of stuff before you started talking Cardinals, I actually had the Denver Broncos draft board brought up. Um, and they they know what their weakness is. And they just, they they went to fill it. That's all that they did. The fact that they went ahead and got lucky in the fact that potentially the best wide receiver in the draft fell to them at 15. And they got Jerry Judy, who, if he's not the best receiver, he's the most complete 
receiver in the draft. And I have no problem saying that Jerry Judy has, he's got the route tree. He's got the hands. He's got the speed. He's got the height. He's got the ups. He's got the versatility that you want in a number one receiver. They already have Cortland Sutton there, but that's really all that they had. Cause they went ahead and let Emmanuel Sanders go last year to, you know, contend for a super bowl, which he did. But then in the second round, you went ahead and got KJ Hamler. KJ Hamler is one of those receivers that you look at and you're like, okay, he might not be the biggest guy and he might not like run, uh, run all these routes that you're expecting, but he is speed. You just want him to run a go route and you know that Drew Locke's got a hell of an arm and that throwing it in that mile high thin air, that ball is going to fucking fly. So you're just expecting KJ Hamler to just go ahead and burn the defense and Drew Locke to throw the ball 80 yards. That might fucking happen. Like, so I, I, I think that they um, they made the moves that they had to. They got my guy that I mentioned earlier tonight, Cushenberry, uh, in round three that I wanted the Giants to get. They got him. Uh, you know, I think they shored up a lot of things that they had areas of need. Uh, they also got a cornerback in round three that I think ha- has a lot of upside out of Iowa. Uh, another one of the ones whose name I can't really say. Uh, Ojemuda, Mudia, something like that. Um, but... I, I, the Denver Broncos, man, uh, I'm, I'm with you on uh, putting them in that dark horse area. Uh, I think that the uh, Denver Broncos, oh, God, Craig, you're blurred out, but those legs are white. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> still blurred, still blurred, still that's white. Some, that's some paste. That is oh, very- you know what? It's total tangent, but my son has some good color because of mom, because of the wife. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's dark. He's got beautiful olive skin. I'm so excited. I was like, you'll never, you'll never know the harsh burn of the sun as I do. The, 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 the sting. I'm out there for 18 minutes and I'm lobster. He's going to have it. He's going to have his way with the ladies. Until you turn him into a professional video gamer. <laughs> then he's going to get. No, because I don't have money. Company. From what I understand, the, 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 whatever it is, melanin or whatever it is, it doesn't go backwards. From what I understand. So that if he's got some tone to begin with, like if you're already beautiful Mediterranean skin like my boy has, it's over. You can't go backwards. You can't become Mike Spillane paste. You can't go marshmallow. You just can't. You're, you are what you are. You're, you're debatably are. pastier than I am, though. So not a, No, no, that's not true. It, Look at your it, face. It, no, that's, that's true. I'm looking at your face. I just saw your legs. It's peach. I have a peach tone to me. Look at look at yeah, that. Yeah, because you're worked up right now. <laughs> there's some there's some work. No, that's it. It's the blood. That's all it is. So that's Craig, we were just talking about the Denver Broncos. My my dark horse pick for playoff contender. No. No. They. Locks not ready yet. Okay, so you don't believe Drew Lock to be ready. However. He may have the most complete receiver running back core in the NFL right now. Now, who I would have argued not seeing Kyler Murray last year, he would not have been ready. I think Drew Locke sitting for a year behind Joe Flacco, which okay. I guess Joe Flacco played, but I don't really know. He played like nine games, eight games, something like that, before Locke took over. Nothing to learn from. Do you know what you learn from Joe Flacco? How to be tall. That's How it. to look like a caveman. <laughs> yeah, that's all you learn from a guy like that. So, I mean, Melvin Gordon, Philip Lindsay backfield in Denver. I forgot they got, got Melvin Gordon. I do like Melvin Gordon. Noah Fant at tight end, who I think I like showed Fant. a lot of flashes last year. Here's the thing. If you don't have a quarterback, I trust. These other guys don't matter as much. You, you need someone to get it to them because you're naming guys that require the ball to be either handed to them or thrown to them and more throwing than handing, right? So I just need to see that he's got something before I would get excited. I think it's a fair dark horse. You, you were saying it as a dark horse? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you're in a division. Well, no, no. Kansas City wins that division outright by three games. I mean, it's no. Well, here's here, here's what we got here. So Drew Locke's stats last year, 64.1% completion percentage, just over 1,000 yards, seven touchdowns and three interceptions, 89.7 QB rating. And that's with not having really any receivers aside from Cortland Sutton and Noah Fant at tight end to throw to. 
So uh, let me see how many games that actually got him, because I'm not sure how many he actually played in. Uh, He played in five games. So the numbers are not phenomenal, but in five games, he also only got sacked five times, which shows that he has a decent offensive line in front of him. So really what their problem was is that he just didn't have people to throw to is what that tells me. And they addressed that tenfold in the draft. They did. Judy is huge, right? We were also saying KJ Hamler in the second round, speedster. So now they got Cortland Sutton, KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, Noah Fan, and then two stud running backs. All all I can say is of the, the, you named six players, right? Two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end. Most your, your casual fan has heard of one, and it's Melvin Gordon. Like, let's be honest, right? There's no one proven yet on that roster. There isn't. They're, they're, and they're in a division that I don't think anyone thinks they're going to win. So you'd be looking at wild card. You'd be looking at the 5-6, and then things get weird there if you look at the AFC. Things get weird because I don't know that the AFC West gets a wild card if you're looking around. If you're looking around at teams that have – pedigree they have history they know how to win it's going to be interesting I, I like that i like that you know write that shit down that could be a thing but i would take the bet that it's a no so if you were betting yes they make the playoffs and i was betting no and we put a bottle up or something six pack anything other than like you know something ridiculous i'm in on the real no. money other than real money it could be real money if you want i'll do up to a hundred bucks on something like that but i don't think they're I making mean, i'm down for a bottle i'll put a i'll put a bottle on the dolphins or not the dolphins the uh <laughs> no, the broncos no. the dolphins i would take the no on the dolphins yeah yeah the, he would on not the broncos even put the on that. i don't want my them, yeah. objection would be kansas city wins that division the afc south's gonna be weird that's gonna be weird but so maybe, weird maybe tennessee wins that the baltimore ravens should win the afc north I'm going to call the Bills, and then that's where it gets weird. What I talked about with pedigree and history was the Steelers, but they're not going to be good. The Browns, this is their last chance to to do it if they're going to do it with this core, right? It's either going to happen with Baker, Chubb, whatever, or it isn't. The Raiders have something to prove with Gruden on this big contract. You can never discount the Patriots, so there's just too many names before it. I'll take that bet, sir. Bottle is up for grabs. Let's do it. So now you you mentioned the next talking point I wanted to jump to, and I'm very excited. You're welcome. I think the best draft overall happened in Baltimore. Fucking hands down. Is that is this the team that is going to take the Ravens back to Super Bowl glory? Is it their time? Can they beat a Kansas City Chief? Yes. Tell me anyone, why. Can, anyone can beat anyone in the NFL. So here's the start is you have the returning MVP of last year against the MVP from the year before that. Like these are the dudes. I get excited. I start to smile just talking about Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson, these young, amazing quarterbacks that are saying this is our NFL now. And we are going to show you that the game could be played even more athletic than you ever thought. Like these guys are fun to watch. They're fun to like. So Baltimore, they've got a coach that knows what to do, knows how to win, been there, done that. They now have a Lamar Jackson who has taken a tough loss and hopefully can recover. And they added an amazing linebacker. What of what arguably could have been the best running back in the draft. You said it. They got, they they, every skill position they added to, and they already had the goodies. You know what I'm saying? They already were at the game before the game. This is a team that if there is, it's very hard to repeat in the NFL back to back, right? The last one was the Patriots in the early 2000s. It's very hard to repeat back to back. Kansas City doesn't look like they have the repeat factor, which would put Baltimore as your crush them in the AFC. That doesn't mean they're going to win the whole thing, but they are definitely up there. And were I think didn't they win like 13 games last week last year? They they're very good. Something like that. They they didn't they had a very good draft from a tough position. Mike is Baltimore ready to take the next step. I think they are. Uh I mean, you kind of look at the players that they have at skill positions. You look about the at the fact that they added debatably uh, a top three linebacker in this draft. 
Uh, they added debatably the best running back available in this draft in the second round uh, because for some reason he fell. Um, still trying to figure out why J.K. Dobbins fell to 55, but he did. Um, and then they added just I'm more sure. more additional. Honestly, that's what I had for you guys early second round or late first round was drafting J.K. Dobbins. Cuba and I were talking about it like, oh, my God, he's sitting there. Grab him. And then they took the guy whose name I couldn't pronounce, but whatever. Yeah, no, I think I I, I texted Pat because I was actually picking up pizza at that point. And I was like, Dolphins go Dobbins here, don't they? And he's like, they have to. And then they didn't. And we're like, but we wanted Xavier. Cuba and I were, were happy to take Xavier over Dobbins, but neither happened. And then we got a cornerback. But that's OK. We need secondary. So I'm not I'm yeah. not even. Mad. Yeah, no, but uh, that's kind of how we felt about it. And uh, but it's hard to deny that the Baltimore Ravens, which are already a very strong team, they just got stronger. Things fell to them. They didn't have to work hard for it. No, they had like the 30th pick or 20 something. 28, 28 is what they had. Things just legitimately just fell to them for the most part. They got who they wanted. I think they did trade up to get Dobbins, but at that point, who cares, man? Like, you know, like you, you have the luxury. You got a guy that you liked in the first round. Trajectory. Absolute Super Bowl trajectory. You know, that's the thing. They already had a strong defense. They brought in more pieces for that defense. And they're bringing back a lot of starters. They're not like Kansas City level, who I believe is returning 22 of 24 or 20 of 22 starters this year. That's very good. Um, which is insane. Um, but it's hard I, to repeat. It's really hard to repeat. This is what the NFL is going to become now. We growing up or at least at, for, you know, formative years, you know, teenager to in, into my 20s, it was Colts Patriots. That's what the AFC was. It's making a shift now. AFC, Chiefs Ravens. Chiefs, Ravens. That's oh, what yeah. it's going to be for the next five years. Because they picked young, amazing, talented quarterbacks, right? And then they started surrounding them with a couple veterans here and there, a couple of other young guys. You get talents that are like, top tier at enough positions and you move the needle. You talked about Kelsey earlier, like they've got a wide receiver at tight end and then a bunch of other wide receivers in Kansas city. Like it, it's too many weapons, right? So your defense doesn't even have to do as well when it's like that. Well, that's one of the other things too, is you look at what Kansas city did. They the, like, obviously, yeah, they had Tyreek Hill, but at running back, it's been running back by committee. They don't have a star running back. No. So they took a flyer on a running back that they wanted to see with Edward Zelaire, uh last pick of the first round, which I thought was a little bit surprising that he was the first running back off the board, but he was also amazing at LSU. So I'm not that surprised they by see it. something. They, and, and you got to almost trust guys that saw something in Mahomes. He fell. Well, that's the thing. And you look at some of the other things that are here, like as their wide receivers in Kansas city, they ended up bringing in what Sammy Watkins on basically like a two year prove it deal. Because of the fact that he's kind of fallen out of favor in other places where he went, where sometimes it, it was just that they had a bad, it was wild. They had a bad fucking quarterback. Like it's not even that he was a bad receiver; it's that it was a bad team that couldn't get him the fucking ball. You go ahead and get him on a cheap contract on a team that literally can just sling the ball wherever the hell that they want to at will. Is dude, you get yourself a fucking three inches of separation, and then Mahomes closes his eyes, and it's in your dick. Like that's basically if, what it feels like. If we get a season, it's gonna be a good one. You know if they. They can figure out this distancing stuff, whatever. This year, the AFC is super exciting. This draft was, I, I think you guys know, the most watched in history, right? It was crazy. Now, part of that is because of the what's going on. But the other part is they embraced some of the ridiculousness. I loved, like, the hashtag boo the commissioner. Like, lean in to what is now, right? That's like a 50-something, late 50-year-old white guy. Maybe he's in his early 60s. And he's finally getting it. Like no other sports commissioner, other than you could argue Adam Silver, Adam Silver. really understands his players. You know, it really gets how to market. But he's them. not widely like hated like Goodell is. Everyone no. thinks Goodell's the devil, whereas right. Silver's like they're like we like you. You're no you're every every other sports league is like, hey Adam Silver, how much money for you to do us too? Yes. <laughs> The funny thing about Goodell is he is widely hated while being arguably obscenely successful like yeah. so very good like warren buffett level good at his job 
but everyone loves Warren Buffett and nobody loves Goodell. But he has increased the value of the league and turned it into this literal print your money machine that can still, they're the only thing that didn't change their schedule for coronavirus. They're the only thing that said, no, we're going to keep those three dates because we don't give a shit. We're the NFL. We're going to turn this into whatever we want, which is now the best performance in terms of view viewership we've ever had. They'll spin it. That we we've talked. This was years ago. We talked about the NFL broom and the Goodell sweep. He has talent as an administrator, as what he's doing. He gets a bad rap, but this year I liked him so much more that he was willing to do that. Because that's where you see these guys be like, I'm too good for that. No, no, no. He gets it. He knows where his bread is buttered. Let the fans shred you because he doesn't matter. The money we're all spending on the stuff matters. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's still cashing a check. He doesn't care. He's like, Actually, I don't give a shit. He's not. Well, he uh, yes, decided to he forego did. his pay to try well, and help with relief, which is great. For right now, that is great. But I'm saying he is massively paid. Like his oh, yeah. salary is insane. You, that, that's another thing. Like the NFL, I, I'm a big fan. You know this. I like a lot of sports, but the NFL has my attention. And they've been able to navigate a field of terrible injuries and brain problems and all kinds of shit. Yeah, no, and he's got a forty million dollar a year contract. It's I said it was a lot of money. Yeah. I didn't know I didn't know the number, but it's obscene. It's more than any NFL player. Yep. But not more than any NBA player. Those guys just this year was the year. If coronavirus hadn't happened, this next season was the kick up where Russell was gonna get forty nine. Gross gross that's obscene it is obscene but like i don't if, if the money's there from people watching and people buying i get it shouldn't there be damn near a 50 50 between the players and the teams and it's pretty close in most sports i, I, I it, the money's only going to go up it's all oh, that's the thing we can all lament about it but it's only going up yep so i i have one more draft based question or i guess two more technically draft based questions and i don't want to let you guys tangent out I'll start with Mike on this one because this is another NFC East team. Jalen Hurts, drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles with their second round pick. Why? I think the better question is why Jalen Rager in the first round when Justin Jefferson is sitting right there. So like there's that. a need at wide receiver. They wanted to. They're going. I I see what the Eagles are doing. They're going the the Kansas City Chiefs route. They're going. We want Small, all the speed yeah. all the time. But you just gave Carson Wentz a truckload of money. A lot of it. Two one one forty or one. Th- it's a lot. I think it's one forty. I want to say it's one forty. I'll look it up. Mike, why, why, why? That's that's the question. Um, and you know how much I love uh, love Bleacher Report. Bleacher Report's usually kind of my go-to for coverage nowadays because I feel like they kind of get the younger generation a little bit better. Um, and one of their, you. huh? How dare you, sir? <laughs> it's true. Do you so watch things got, on Bleacher uh, Report? 128 million dollar extension but can go up to 150 mil yeah so my favorite part of draft weekend was watching adam lefko freak out over these picks that the eagles have made um and he 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 freaked out primarily on the on the rager pick but he was very highly questionable about the Hertz pick as well. And I think you that's fair because you just gave him tons of money, but there's that big dependability question. Is Dude. there the durability in Carson Wentz to make it through a full NFL season and be a contender at the end of that season? Because yes, he's made it through full seasons, but has he made it through a full season where the team made it to the playoffs and then was successful in the playoffs? No, because Nick Foles did that part. He got through like the first True. two thirds of the season, did well, got them into a good position. Foles maintained that, and then Foles took like some Eli Manning Super Bowl fourth quarter drugs, to where he just kind of went off in the playoffs to carry them through to a Super. That's Bowl. what I heard. Halftime, he had a bag of Eli's blood, and he was going direct, <laughs> just mainline right. that mainline. Eli Ice. Eli has ice in his veins. He has the don't give a fuck. I'm gonna throw it anyway, and I love that about him. I know you guys love him too, but. 
you you have to love that guy. You have to love it for the willingness. But oh, so Jalen good. Hurts. Here's my little side argument here for why it's not a knock on Wentz as much as it's a. Are we looking at an offense that wants to be a little bit even more than what New Orleans was trying to do with Hill, right? Who they just they just doted upon him too, which is kind of a weird situation because they have three quarterbacks and they're going to keep all three. By the way, yep. they're they're going to come in with three because Hill runs packages. Are we going to see? Um, I, I guess the only analogy I can use is a basketball analogy because you don't see it in the NFL. Uh, a minutes restriction on Carson Wentz to a degree. He is so talented, but he's on my forever shit list. He burned my last year fantasy in my four leagues. I went for him in three of them. Obviously I won no titles. Duh. We we can just say that I came in second in one league, but I pivoted away from him. The talent ceiling on Carson Wentz is massive. He, he, we see it. We know it. If he stays healthy, does having a guy like Jalen hurts and using him the way we've seen the Saints correctly use a change of pace guy and maybe even 10 to 20 percent more than that by Carson Wentz time. I, I would argue, yes, it could. Doesn't yep. mean a freak injury couldn't happen. But are you saving reps like in basketball? You save minutes. That's how I looked at that pick. I know that's a weird tangential different sport, but. Sean Payton is like a guru of coaching in the NFL. He's looked at as top three, top five coach, I would argue, right? Nobody really refutes that, and he's executing this strategy. So why wouldn't other younger, less experienced, but but won a title, coaches try something like that? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I think uh, they kind of mentioned. I've seen a couple reports saying that uh, even though, obviously, Jalen Hurts is coming in to be a quarterback in the NFL, they might toss him at, like, that H-back or running back position, so that way they can try running these weird sets. Is he going to just take the ball and run a sneak? Are we going to go ahead and have him go ahead and just fake a run and then just go ahead and throw a 70-yard bomb because he's got arm talent like that? Yeah. So I I think that the pick – seems more questionable than it should be. Um, and then the reason for that is a, I think it is safe to want a backup plan for when Carson Wentz gets hurt and why not have, have, have a mobile, a mobile backup plan. I don't even think it's a backup plan. I really feel like they're putting themselves in a position with a guy that can contribute immediately because he's getting only a few chances a game. And all he's yeah. got to do is what you're saying. You nailed what he's literally going to do. He either takes it in the backfield. That's a national championship winning quarterback on the same squad that Tua was on. They they didn't they co fucking quarterback essentially. Like there well, they is benched Jalen for Tua and then Tua won. So. I know that, but Jalen did not do bad. They did co quarterback though. What's that? They did co quarterback though. They did. And and while that has not shown success in the NFL, just like running back by committee has been questionable at times, it this is an interesting league, isn't it? Where you have the guys like we talked about, Mahomes, Watson, Jackson, a whole new tier of guys. There's teams that don't have those three. And when you don't have the three, you might need to figure something out. And Wentz is not in that tier on purpose. Right? I didn't say his name. I didn't say – I mean, shit, didn't uh, – Goff just got 120 plus as well. Like, I don't yeah. think they're in the same tier as those three. They're tier two guys. So now you take a tier two and a tier two and a half three, and you try to see can we be weird enough and trick play enough? Because you're right, Hertz could fake that run, come back, and where Tebow would fail because he would do this with his wrist, Hertz <laughs> could gun it and put it where it needs to be. I think that's going to be very interesting if they use it that way. 